Hey guys, I'm on my way to East Brisbane to pick up my guest today. This guy started in rentals as a BDM. His first ever sale was just over $5 million. And he actually made it through to the final round of MasterChef, but couldn't continue because he just started in real estate. And so he wasn't able to take three months off to go on the show. So let's pick up my guest today. Dan the man, how are you mate? Welcome, well, Frank. Okay. Well. So Frank, what coffees are we drinking today? Triple espresso, Daniel, no sugar, no milk. A triple espresso. Triple espresso. What the fuck's wrong with you? You don't need to ruin a good coffee with with milk or sugar. So when it's a truly good coffee, you don't need to hide it. <laughs> Put hairs on your chest, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, how do you drink this? It's delicious. So you drink three of these a day? Yeah, sometimes more. More? Sometimes. Frank, that's <laughs> nine coffees a day. Yeah, I never really look at it like that, but never <laughs> mention it. I just look at it as three. So, mate, your first sale was $5 million. How the hell <laughs> does someone... My well, first sale was fucking $209,000. Yeah, I was in rentals. I wasn't even in sales when it happened. Remember, my business partner at the time, he had a big riverfront block of land for sale. And um, it was on Virginia Avenue in Hawthorne. had no house on it. And... They tried to sell it and market it and this and that, and no one was sort of biting on it. Because I went and asked a next door neighbour if he'd be interested in buying it. And he said, I would, but I think they want too much money for it. And I said, what would you pay for it? He said, oh, I'd pay $5 million. And so I went back to the office, got a contract, had no idea how to fill one out. Like, I literally had never done anything in sales in my life. Sort of blundered it, f- figured it out, and went to the principal and said, here's an offer on your block of land at Virginia Avenue. He's gone, what are you talking about? I said, I've got an offer. It was a cash offer too, so I had no condition. How'd you get that? I said, I went and asked the neighbour. And he just looked at me and I said, well, didn't you ask the neighbour? He's gone, no, no, I didn't. <laughs> so, still didn't get into sales straight after. I still waited about probably another year till I actually decided to get into sales just after 2008. So just as the GFC just started taking effect. So just oh, when nice. everything really, when shit really hit the fan. So I thought selling real estate was, it was meant to be that hard. This is disgusting. It's man. delicious. Oh. Mate. That'll keep you going. That'll, oh. that'll get you through. Yeah, you? for a week. What did you learn when you first started well, out during that GFC? Well, in a good market, or a more buoyant market, people tend to not pay so much attention to buyers. They just concentrate on selling and this and you know, listing, should I say. And buyers are like, oh, well, there's plenty to choose from. If you don't buy it, somebody else will. But during the GFC, I mean, you had one, if you're lucky, two people come through and open. So you really had to latch onto them and... Put them in the car, show them everything you've got, and then take them back to the one that you're really trying to sell them. And give them that sort of so service. old school. That old school service that a lot of people now just say, look, I'll email you the link or uh, take a drive past. If you want to have a look, let me know. I'll meet you there. But, I mean, I've always been of the mentality, if you're going to tell them to take a drive past and they're going to drive past, why don't you just meet them there yeah. while they're driving past? Or put them in the car. Put them in the car. It's the best time to build a bit of a relationship <laughs> and just have a, an informal chat and like, oh, you know, what are you, what are you actually looking for or what's important to you? What made you get into to real estate? You, you gave a, a career in cooking away. Mate, you, you, could, I, have been, you could have been master chef. I got this form when I was going in for the last round before filming saying that if you go through this round, you have to take six months off and come and film or whatever it was, um, three months. And I just literally just started in real estate. I'm like, I can't do that. So I just left. <laughs> oh, wow. I moved from Melbourne to Brisbane in 2002. I was working at and running family nightclub and a couple of places in the valley. I was living in Belimba and I kept sort of seeing a few of the agents floating around, in particular uh, David, who gave me my, my start and just saw him out and about having coffee. And he's like, well, why don't you try real estate? And I said, no, no thanks. And I said, I'm Why? Why no thanks? Oh, there's just that stigma. It's like, oh, really? I know, there's this, there is, isn't there? Oh, massive. I don't think there's, you know, what? used car salesmen and real estate agents. I think it's treated a lot more seriously now than it was, you know, go back 10, 15 years. It was, oh, it's just a, you know, slimy, sleazy real estate agent that's just going to try and sell you something for too much. Whereas now, because we're so focused on customer service, repeat business, I think we really do the right thing by people and because of social media, if you don't do the right thing by people now, everyone finds, everyone out, finds out really out, yeah. quickly. Like, so mate, tell us tell us some stories. Have you ever fucked up? Yeah, I sold the wrong property once. <laughs> the guy I was working at the time, he told me, he's like, yeah, yeah, this property and 
So he goes, you just have to get the contract. But I'd put all the details for the wrong property. <laughs> so I'd put the RP and lot and everything and literally the address for the, for the next door property. And it was a done deal. And like the, the owners came in to me to sign it. And <laughs> like they didn't even look and they just signed it all off. Oh no. Come settlement day. Oh no. It was the complete wrong property. And <laughs> no one had picked anything up until that time we've all turned up to the property and the other owners walked out and going what the fuck are you doing and going what are you doing <laughs> he's going I own the place I've gone no you what <laughs> and then I looked next door and I realised that that house was completely vacant oh no and I was just going oh what <laughs> so I had to put the um, the buyers into a hotel for I think it was four days <laughs> Until they sorted it all out amongst themselves. I remember once I included a, a microwave, I just assumed was included, never assumed by the way. That cost me three grand or three and a oh, half shit. grand because the buyer was insistent that the microwave was included. It looks like it was built in, but apparently it pops out. You know what I, you know what I reckon our second job is in real estate? Bloody selling appliances. Oh, mate. How I've many fucking so microwaves and fridges have you sold? I sold a, a nine year old fridge the other day, but not one grand, two and a half grand. <laughs> I reckon that was a cracker. <laughs> Did you get commission on that? No, I should have. So, mate, what's been your best year ever? Uh, 2010 was probably was my best year. I was um, the number one career mail advertiser. I finished well in the top 10 for Ray White. I think it was five. And I just had a lot of fun doing it. Mate, the roads are pretty bumpy in East oh, Brisbane, mate, can I just they're say? They're getting like, it all fixed. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. this is oh. all getting fixed. This is going to be fantastic. What kind of area do you work in, mate? Mainly Bloomberg and Hawthorne. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, so what kind of fees were you writing? Just under a million bucks that year. Wow, that's mm. awesome, man. How many days a week do you work? Probably do four days. Mm. I might work on a Sunday, yeah. but then I won't work on a Friday. Okay. Sunday can be a really dollar productive day. Tuesday afternoon, if you've got nothing on, for me, I'm not going to be in the office. If it's not dollar productive, if you're not in front of a buyer, in front of a seller or a potential seller or a potential buyer, what are you doing? So what's remember. making you money? Like what's the Buyer inspections, you know, so... Saturdays, there's a lot of open homes and a lot of kids' sports, so not everyone can get to my opens on a Saturday. So I find if I open a property on a Sunday, people go, oh, I don't want to work Sunday. Take another day off. Look at how many open homes there are between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. on a Saturday. Oh, Nearly all of them. Think outside. <laughs> so if you've got like a buyer, they've got like eight properties to choose from in, in you know. You could miss out on yeah. that buy just because. But on Sunday, you've got no competition. That's right. Because yeah, no gold. one does it. If you're writing figures and you're doing dollar productive exercises, it just works. It doesn't matter where you're sitting. Yeah. And we can work anywhere now. Isn't that the beauty of real estate? You've got, you got a phone. You've got an office. Really. I love that. And so what are you doing when you're not at work? Uh, I hit the golf ball, train, box, go for a drive to the beach. I really enjoy my downtime and that means not being around other people. Yeah. Just spending time by myself. I got a puppy the other week, so that's keeping me busy. So yeah, yeah just, just that. Because we spend so much time with people and... You know, rah rah, go go go, full of energy. That when I'm not, I'm just it's downtime. Yeah, I'm just happy being on my. You know, own. and the interesting thing is, like nearly all the agents I've spoken to, when they're not working, they just want to chill, chill out. Yeah. For that half an hour, forty-five minutes, you're doing an open. Your energy needs to be high. By the end of a Saturday, I'm just like, oh, I've yeah. got no more words. If you could go back to Frank Lombardi, little Frank Lombardi, just came out of rentals, <laughs> starting in sales, and if you could go back and give him any advice, mm. knowing everything you know now, just what would it be? Have your data. Have all your data, your names, your numbers, your addresses, your investment properties, their dog's name, their cat's name, wife, sister, mm -hmm. um, email address. Like, just have all your data really clean because with privacy laws, people are getting harder and harder to contact. So your database, for me, is more about how many people have your number in their phone. Oh, I love not, that. not how many numbers this is do you have in your phone. How yeah. many people could you call? Of your clients or people who've and dealt they'll be with like, hey Frank, call. yeah, hey Dan, how are you? Yeah. The database just means you have their details. It's up to you then to take that data and build a relationship from it. Yeah, mate, I love this. Yeah. Thank you so much. No worries, thank you, mate. I'm gonna keep drinking this coffee, but I'm fucking. Mate, I've finished I'm, mine. I'm buzzing now. I've finished mine. You want another one? <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs>